In this problem, we have a list of the ages of a random selection of actresses when they won an award and uh, the ages of actors when they won an award in the same year. So we've had this paired set of data and we were told to find the differences of the ages by taking the ages of the actresses minus the ages of the actors. So I just put the actresses in L1, the actors in L2, and then I form L3 by taking L1 minus L2. So now I'm ready to find my confidence interval. I've already gone through the hypothesis test. So to find a confidence interval based on the same level of confidence that we were working with in the hypothesis test, what I do is I look for the significance level, and that is 0.05. And this was a right tail, or sorry, a left tail test based on the alternative hypothesis that mu sub d is less than zero. So that means that that 0.05 is in that left-hand tail. But when we work with a confidence interval, we always have to have two tails. So if we are working with a one-tail test and we want to turn this into a confidence interval, then I'm going to make a matching 0.05 in the opposite tail, in this case on the right-hand side. So what that tells me is that in the center, I have 90% or 0.90. This 5% on the left tail, 5% in the right tail, that makes 10% total and the remainder is 90%. So when I go into T interval, because when we work with matched pairs, we use just the regular T distribution, and I'm going to use data, and my list is L3, because that's the data set, and my confidence level is 90%. And you can put 90 or 0.90 either way. And when I do that, I get negative 15.4 comma negative 1.6. So when I look at this confidence interval, it is only negative numbers. And what that tells me is that since zero is not in the interval, we don't believe that there's a likelihood that the values are the same in the two lists. So since we only have negative numbers, we reject the null hypothesis. And that's how you do that problem.